Everybody is probably fed up with LED lamps, especially the blue free circadian ones, but I need to make this one, so why not document it in a video? And this one is not going to go in a screw base like the other ones, but it's going to be built into this plastic box. I'm going to reuse the box from this energy saving scam device. I will cut the bottom of it and basically put some plexiglass on it and it will go into a socket and shine down on the floor, not into your eyes. This electricity saving scam box used to have a capacitor in it, a big capacitor in a parallel to mine, and some board with an indication LED, so let's get rid of it and let's put something useful into it. You will probably cut the box like this and there will be a window with a plexiglass and behind it an LED board like this. I modeled the size of the board using this paper. It was probably some moisture detector. It will fit into it like this and into the other half as well. And there are going to be LEDs on the board and this is going to be cut and there is going to be a board with some power supply, a capacitive dropper. Trying to visualize how many SMD LEDs I can fit in it. 6x8 is too much, it would be too tight. So 5x7 should work. 35 LEDs in a total. Of course any sort of accuracy is going to be non-existent, but... So that's the LED board and it's a double-sided board. LEDs on one side and the other side is going to be soldered onto the other board. Right angle and this board is going to be the power supply. Okay, the fifth row has to be one LED less, so in total 34. As you can see when it comes to circuit boards, whatever does the job, does the job. And this is roughly the plan, some red LEDs, some yellow LEDs and two phosphor yellow ones. Not too many because they have a wider spectrum which goes into green. The red and yellow LEDs produce narrower bands, not going into the circadian response curve. The phosphor yellow has a wider spectrum which goes into it a little bit. So just two pieces to give it a little bit of green. And the phosphor yellow LEDs are way more efficient, like four times higher efficiency than the normal yellow ones. And some CD reflection just to show the sheer difference between the spectrum of the phosphor yellow LED and the normal yellow. The spectrum of the phosphor yellow is way, way wider. Now of course the soldering, some rosin, some solder. And that's it. Always soldering the first terminal of the last LED and the second terminal of the previous one. That's it. Let's clean it using ethanol. Nice! So that's the LED board, here is going to be the power supply board. It will go here like this. And some plexiglass over the LEDs, way thicker than necessary of course. The box is cut and now shaping the plexiglass for the hole. And it fits nicely. Amazing. So the plexiglass is glued in using tons of super glue and the board of the power supply goes in like this. And the LED board will go in like this. And it's going to be soldered together like this. Physically bonding it and also making the connection. Here is the board with the components. I added an LED to find it in the dark the other side and here is the box with the switch built into it now the boards are put together using tons of solder and some thick copper wires the main connection is the connection to the switch and that's it the board is in the box let's plug it in this small indicator LED lights up and it works Nice! Some screws to keep the board in place. 
So it's finished and now let's take a look at the schematic of it. The main S comes in through a slow fuse, 32 milliamps. And out of curiosity I measured the resistance of it and as you can see low current fuses have quite a high resistance. Here is the main section of it with this dropper capacitor with its discharging resistor and this inrush resistor limiting the inrush current when you turn it on. Here is the smoothing capacitor with its discharging resistor and this LED resistor further limiting the inrush current through the LEDs and also improving the smoothing effect of this capacitor. And there is 18 red LEDs in a series, 14 yellow and 2 phosphor yellow ones. Their total voltage drop is 67 volts and the current through the LEDs is 10.4 milliamps. And so the power going into the LEDs is 0.7 watts. And the total consumption of it is 0.87 watts. The rest of the consumption is the losses in the power supply. And there is 73 volts on this capacitor, but I used a 350 volt capacitor because if some of the LEDs went open a circuit, this capacitor would charge to the full rectified minus voltage, which would be about 325 volts. And then there is this section with this indicator LED. It's dim, but still definitely bright enough to find the switch in dark. It runs at 0.18 milliamps, but a super bright red LED will be visible at this current. Of course, at this current I could give it just a resistive dropper with just a resistor and a diode in a series, but because now electricity is bloody expensive, let's give it a proper capacitive dropper and a bridge rectifier. The LED also could have an anti-parallel diode, passing just one half cycle through the LED and the other one through the diode, but a bridge rectifier is better. And I'm using a 2.2 nano, 250 volt AC class Y1 safety capacitor. And the capacitance is so tiny, I think it doesn't need a discharging resistor. And these capacitors are typically used in interference filters, going from live to ground or neutral to ground. And these typically don't have a discharging resistor anyway in appliances. And in operation most of the voltage is dropped on this capacitor, not on the resistor. This is just an inrush resistor. And even if this capacitor went short circuit, the current through the LED would still be about 5 milliamps, not destroying it, and this resistor would dissipate about 1.1 watt, which is fine being a 2 watt resistor. But class Y1 capacitors are extremely unlikely to go short circuit. And if this one went short circuit, I hope the fuse would blow, of course. But class X2 capacitors are also typically not going short circuit. And when the switch is off, it draws just 0.18 milliamps. And because it uses a capacitive dropper not resistive, the real power consumption is just 2 milliwatts. And of course the values of the components are not very critical. And this smoothing capacitor could have even higher capacitance like 22 micro, but I had 10 so I used 10. And most of the components I used are from old appliances like monitors, televisions, power supplies or some old stock components I have. I've only bought the LEDs, this capacitor, because electrolytic capacitors tend to deteriorate and I bought this fuse. The rest of the components is old, as well as this nice housing, which finally has a good use. And of course in the device here is the switch, the fuse, the inrush resistor of the main section, the inrush resistor of this LED, the dropper capacitor of this LED, the main dropper capacitor with the discharging resistor, here is the bridge rectifier of the main section, the bridge rectifier for this LED is under the board, the only SMD component on this board. Here is the smoothing capacitor with the discharging resistor, the LED resistor and the LEDs. And when I shine a light through it, you can see the components with the traces at the same time. And of course the most important factor for the LED current is the capacitance of this dropper capacitor and the type numbers of the LEDs are in the description. And that's it with the cover on. Let's test it, and it works nicely. And it goes into a wall socket and of course the LED is visible unless it's under studio lights. So that's it and please consider supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And of course already starting to work on the DIY spectrometer. Based on a computer program, a webcam and a CD reflection or a prism.